Okay, in this lecture, we're going to look at our first candidate topology for a class F amplifier. And we're going to use a series transmission line for this one. Okay, so here I've drawn the basic circuit that we're going to analyze. Uh, we've placed a transmission line in series between the drain of the transistor and the load with a few extra components. The series capacitor here is just a DC block. The transmission line is a quarter wave transmission line with a characteristic impedance of Z naught. We'll discuss that in a moment. The parallel resonant tank shown here is resonant at the fundamental frequency. And we're assuming the fundamental frequency is the rate of switch enclosure at the input of the transistor. Finally, this is driving a load uh, that is nominally equal to the antenna impedance of 50 ohms or potentially uh, an external filter that the PA had to, uh, has to drive. So as we start to examine this, we're going to look at the impedance looking towards the antenna from the transmission line's perspective. We can use our basic analysis of quarter wave transmission lines to find this impedance. So this is the impedance looking into the uh, or looking uh, into the transmission line uh, from the drain of the transistor, noting that the transmission line is a quarter wavelength, uh, which is 90 degrees. Uh, if we solve this, we can simplify this because the uh, tangent of 90 degrees is infinite. So our input or our impedance looking into the transmission line is z naught squared divided by r antenna. And nominally, we might set this to be equal to the optimum termination and resistance of the class F uh, power amplifier. Solving for this would yield that C naught would be equal to the square root of the product of the optimum termination resistance and the antenna impedance. Okay, so let's examine this. At high frequencies, we know that the capacitor in the parallel resonant tank starts to look like a short circuit. It's a low impedance at high frequencies. Now, at the fundamental frequency, this is a high impedance, and we know that the quarter wave transmission line has an impedance inversion property. So it will invert the impedance of the parallel resonant tank. And so at the fundamental frequency, we'll only see the antenna impedance. Pardon me, not the antenna impedance. We'll see the optimum termination impedance, assuming that we've designed the transmission line uh, to create that uh, impedance match. So what we're going to see is that at odd harmonics, the short circuit from the capacitor is going to be inverted at the drain of the transistor, creating a high impedance. And at all even harmonics, the short circuit will be maintained because the wavelength of the transmission line will effectively be multiples of a half wavelength. And that will mean that we'll have a short circuit for all even harmonics. Now, it's important to note that for this topology, we're relying on a transmission line, and uh, this isn't necessarily a very good design for an integrated circuit, but is fine if we're doing this in a discrete application. In our next solution, we're going to use a transmission line as the DC feed for the drain of the transistor. Now, this solution is going to take the short circuit from the supply voltage and uh, invert the impedance using a quarter wave transmission line, much like the last solution did. So here at odd harmonics, we maintain the high impedance, uh, and at even harmonics, we maintain a low impedance, uh, which is what we want for the class F network. But again, we'll note a key point here is that quarter wave transmission lines are large. They can be millimeters to centimeters long in the RF to millimeter wave bands that we're looking at. 
And the typical RFIC that we might want to implement this on is going to be three to four millimeters on each side. So we're going to look at an alternative solution to using transmission lines. Here, what we're going to do is cascade a series of resonant circuits. Now, each of the resonant tanks that we've drawn here in series from the drain to the output is resonant at an odd harmonic. So for instance, we'll make this one resonant at F3. This one will be resonant at F5. This one will be resonant at F2 to the N plus one. And the shunt network that we've drawn here will be resonant at F sub F not the fundamental frequency. In addition to this, uh, I'm terminating this with R opt, which means we would also need a matching network, which we can probably embed in the large number of inductors and capacitors that we have. So if we think about what we've done here is we've just brute force synthesized high impedances at odd harmonics and uh, low impedances at uh, even harmonics by using these, uh, these uh, resonant tanks. So this is still not really integratable. And in the next lecture, we're going to look at, uh, at an alternative where perhaps we don't have to terminate every harmonic uh, properly in order to yield a decent result uh, where we haven't quite perfectly shaped the waveforms, but we've shaped them well enough that we get a good efficiency improvement. So we'll look at that next time.